We're going to begin the official part of the uh, summit now. Uh, as you know, we have opening remarks from uh, two people. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, the Director of Financial Inclusion at the MasterCard Foundation, who will be making opening remarks on behalf of the Foundation. So please welcome Anne Miles, the Director of Financial Inclusion. Anne. Good morning. I wanted to raise my hand as a youth delegate, but sorry that I can't do that anymore. Anyway, I'm very pleased to be here on behalf of the Foundation, but also in my own capacity as Director of Financial Inclusion. It was, we had a lot of fun together almost a year and a half ago, two years ago, with the first Young Africa Work Summit in 2015 in Cape Town. And it's very nice to see that at least 40% or almost 41% of the people that we met and we were with there are back with us again. And welcome to um, many of the new faces and people in the room. I'd really like to acknowledge um, that we have um, quite a distinguished group of people with us today, starting with the Honorable Jean Philbert Sengimana, who you will be hearing from shortly, who is, our minister, who is the Rwandan Minister for Youth and ICT. We have directors from the MasterCard Foundation Board with us. We have many guest speakers and experts in this room around the issues uh, challenging us around youth employment. We have colleagues, friends, partners, this wonderful group of delegates, of youth delegates. So on behalf of the Foundation, welcome to the 2017 Young Africa Works Summit. We're very thrilled to be with you here in Kigali. We are here together over the next two days because we have a shared understanding of the opportunity that is before us. As we all know, Africa's young population is increasing rapidly. 11 million will enter the workforce each year for the next decade. 11 million. Think about that number. But as we know, economic growth on the continent has not always translated into increased opportunity or employment. And this growing workforce will require skills development, education, training, access to financial services, and jobs. We believe that with the right conditions, there is no other sector at this moment better positioned to deliver on some of these needs than agriculture. And as you know, these are not new ideas. The promise of a green revolution in Africa has been around since the 1970s. But the potential we feel now of a demographic dividend in many countries on the continent means the opportunity has never been more pressing. And agriculture, we believe, is at the heart of this opportunity. Agriculture is the largest sector of employment on the continent, but it only contributes a quarter of the GDP. The region holds about half the world's fertile, uncultivated land, but productivity remains low. And at the same time, the opportunities for transformation are great. Job creation is happening off the farm, within the sector, and is growing. And Africa's youth have never had greater access to education or technology. And there has never been a better time for innovation within the sector. We know that there is innovation occurring. We see it through our work almost every day. There are some of you, like TechnoServe, who are working with the private sector to ensure young people have job opportunities. Others, like ICPE and SNV, who are finding ways new ways to protect Africa's rich biodiversity. And still others outside of our work, like the government of Rwanda, who are developing climate resilient strategies. But it's not just organizations, the private sector or government, who are changing the sector. Those of you who were with us in Cape Town 
for our first Young Africa Work Summit may remember that I spoke to three incredible young people at the close. One of those young people was Maureen Gitata. Maureen is a MasterCard Foundation scholar who now works for Dahlberg, a, a global uh, consulting firm. Maureen said to me, the truth is, young people are already doing a lot in agriculture, but only now have been given a platform to speak. Maureen is right. Young people are innovating agriculture, and it's exciting. These young people, three of whom you will hear from in a moment, and there are many more like them. I just spent, while preparing for our talk, you know, for this moment, speaking with Rita Kamani, who many of you met at the Young Africa Work Summit a year and a half ago, and what she's doing with her firm, Farm Drive. The developments over the last 15 to 18 months have been incredible. So seek her out and, and ask her what's changed and how she's using her skills and technology uh, in agriculture. She is a great example. She was a computer engineer, but there are architects, economists, and other people coming, other young people coming from disciplines that are applying what they know to modernize agriculture in new ways. They're adopting new technologies, applying modern farming and agribusiness methods and becoming job creators instead of job seekers. And they are transforming agriculture from subsistence farming to a modern, competitive, and diverse sector. This shift will require more opportunities for Af Africa's youth to build skills, finance innovative businesses, and to advance agriculture science on the continent. But despite progress, realizing a transformation of this sector will be complicated and complex. It will require that Africa's young people overcome the barriers that still prevail, such as access to land, to finance, to training and education, and modern technology and techniques, barriers that unfortunately disproportionately affect women. It will also require that young people harness opportunities and to make new discoveries in agriculture science, develop new farming techniques that are relevant to their communities, to develop climate-smart technologies and practices to ensure that they are resilient to a changing environment. So that's why we're here together over the next two days, to share what's working, what's not working, and discover new ways to ensure young people's efforts are supported. We will hear from governments, policymakers, the private sector, nonprofit organizations, economists, and educators on productivity-boosting technology, climate-smart agriculture tools, and strategies that empower women. That's just, those are some of the topics that we'll be discussing, but I expect many more will happen in the corridors of this summit. So let's be open with each other, open to new conversation on ways we can work with Africa's youth and each other to become cha champions for agriculture and to address the difficult issues that young people face working in this sector so that they can transform the sector and usher in a new era of equitable prosperity on the continent. So thank you. Enjoy the next two days. And I look forward to seeing and talking with many of you. Thank you for setting the scene for the next couple of days and outlining what, uh, what's at stake. Um, we can't have one official welcome. We need two official welcomes. One is from the MasterCard Foundation. The other is from the government of Rwanda. So who better than the minister, as Anne mentioned, the minister of youth and ICT to welcome you to Rwanda. Uh, youth, those two sectors combined, youth and information and communication technologies put together can go a long way towards addressing the issues that we're going to be talking about in transforming agriculture. So the minister and his ministry here in Rwanda are showing us already some things that can be done. So it's with great pleasure then that I ask you to welcome the Minister for Youth and ICT from Rwanda, the Honorable Jean Philbert and Sengimana. Mr. Minister. Good morning, everyone. 
Welcome to Kigali. Madam Ann Miles, Director of Financial Inclusion at the MasterCard Foundation, distinguished guests, young people, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be with you this morning uh, in the opening of this 2017 Young Africa Works Summit here in Kigali. I extend a very warm welcome and greeting to all distinguished speakers and delegates from participating countries and organizations. I'd like to convey my thanks to the MasterCard Foundation for bringing this important meeting here in Rwanda. This is an open and inclusive space for collaboration of young people and stakeholders involved in different spheres of agriculture sector across the African continent to envision ways of strengthening their roles in transforming the agriculture in our respective countries. When I think about food security in Africa, a few things come to my mind. I think about the millions of African subsistence farmers who, whose live, livelihoods depend on their smallhold farms. I think about the huge continent with fertile soils which remain largely unproductive. I think about the $35 billion that Africa spends every year import, importing food. I think about the 200 million Africans that are undernourished. But I also think about the millions, the 250 million young people in Africa whose energies and innovation is not yet put at good use to change this situation. How can we accept to put up with these two conflicting realities? On one side, we have a huge problem. On the other side, we have a solution, but the problem never meets the solution. I think this is the challenge of this summit. So before moving further into the topic of, uh, of today, I'd like to share a few numbers that I think Mars also uh, shared. In 2015, uh, the United Nations estimated that there were 226 million young people in Africa aged between 15 and 24, accounting for almost 20% of Africa's total population. And by 2030, the number of youth is expected to rise to approximately 44% or 331 million. Africa is the only continent where the youth population is increasing. 11 million young people in Africa hit the labor market every year. And this is expect expected to continue for the next decade. 72% of, of those young people live on less than $2 a day. So that means that they are self-employed uh, or they are doing unpaid family work with no formal wages and no social protection. The International Labor Organization estimates that between 2000 and 2008, Africa created 73 million jobs, but only 16 million of those jobs were for young people aged between 15 and 24. So as a result, many young people in Africa remain underemployed or engaged into informal jobs with very low productivity and pay. For young people living in the rural areas, those prospects are even more limited. With little or no access to land, markets, finance, or education, rural youth struggle to engage in profitable agricultural activities. In my country, Rwanda, more than 36% uh, of youth are still underemployed, which means that they are not using their full potential 
to maximize their contribution to the country's economy. This summit should therefore be an opportunity to, aid, to identify practical ways to involve the youth in transforming agricultural practices aimed at enhancing productivity and increased commercialization and industrialization of agricultural products. Indeed, skilled and empowered young people are quick to embrace and create new technology solutions, employ climate smart agriculture techniques such as irrigation, greenhouses, and so on. I believe that everyone is a leader in this room. And I think that the role of leaders is to connect dots, to make solutions meet problems. Before even creating additional dots, we should connect those who are already in our midst. In Rwanda, we coined a formula for solving that problem. And the formula is represented by six characters. And the six characters form one word. And the one word is Oscars. So it's not the Oscar award. <laughs> but I wouldn't mind awarding an Oscar to the person who is going to be able to connect all those dots. So the first dot is O. And O stands for opportunity. The second is S. S stands for skills. The third is C, it's creativity. The fourth is attitude. And the fifth is resources. Sixth is support. Now, I believe that as we put our minds together to resolve the biggest problem facing the African youth today, which is unemployment, we need to consider that the first sector that is able to provide opportunities, in my view, is agriculture. I have no doubt about it. As much as we work so hard to create off-farm jobs, but when I think about the 60% young people in Africa who have not gone beyond primary school education, I think that productive agriculture remains the, what we call in the geek terms, the killer app. So our job really is to make sure that we use uh, that killer app. But what is really important is to find ways to build a funnel so that we connect those opportunities to the necessary skills that we apply the necessary innovation and creativity that we sharpen young Africans' minds and, and broaden their horizons and uh, 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 shape the attitude so that they, are, they become problem solvers. You know, because there are two ways to look at a problem. One is to look at a problem and see the opportunity that always is behind or complain about the problem and go to the street for the government or some other people to resolve the problem for us. It's really up to us. In this room, there are so many organizations whose, whose job and business is to put resources to good use. And the world has an excess of resources. But we are just not able to connect those resources with those profitable projects that can create win-win for young people, for financial uh, institutions, and for non-for-profit uh, organizations such as MasterCard and TechnoServe and others who are in this room. So this is the time for change. This is the time we say no to this unending uh, paradox of problems living side by side with solutions. As you proceed in your discussions, prepare yourself for contributing to uh, finding solutions to this problem. A lot of effort has already been made in many countries in Africa to empower youth and women to educate girls. But we have reached, but have we reached where we want to be? What can be done differently or more to have youth and women more engaged productively 
in using technology and innovation in agriculture. What challenges have we met to ensure that the full potential of youth and women in transforming agriculture uh, is guaranteed all over Africa? I expect this summit to be such a platform to find solutions to those issues. Be part of the process. Ensure that African young boy and young girl's energy, innovation, and creativity is harnessed and put at good use. I wish you a fruitful and productive meeting over the next two days, and I wish you an enjoyable and comfortable stay in Rwanda. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you for those very thoughtful remarks. You are all leaders in this room, said the minister. And the role of leaders is to make the connection between the solution and the problem. And you all win an Oscar if you do that. Am I right? <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Very good. All right. Before we get to the uh, first panel discussion, where you'll be hearing from some very impressive uh, young people, we wanted to show you a short video that we've produced at the foundation. This video is going to be released uh, next week. So you are getting a sneak preview of what uh, many people around the world will see next week. And this is a short video outlining some of the issues that we'll be talking about over the next two days. So if you want to turn your attention to the screens, we have a short video to show you. Agriculture is the engine of many economies in Africa. It is the largest sector of employment and leads to more poverty reduction and growth than any other sector. The continent's next generation of farmers, researchers and scientists are more educated and have greater access to technology than any generation before them. They have an unprecedented opportunity to innovate across the value chain, boost agricultural productivity and transform the sector. Africa's young people are already innovating to address some of the world's big problems like poverty, food insecurity, and climate change. Africa's young people are the key to agricultural innovation and agriculture is the key to the transformation of the continent. All right. So look for that starting next week uh, on television and movie theaters, and maybe we'll win an Oscar for producing it, who knows?